Welcome back to uh, our uh, fifth annual ECU Anthropology Alumni Lectures. I want to thank you, e each and every one of you, for attending, uh, particularly my professional development class right now. <laughs> I know it's uh, tough. This is our last uh, uh, guest speaker, and I really appreciate our former professional development anthropology student. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Our last speaker uh, is Emma Browning. And uh, before I get to uh, introduce Emma, and she's one of our former professional development anthropology class uh, participants, uh, the purpose of this series, this ECU anthropology series, is designed for former ECU anthropology students to share their uh, expertise and experiences to current anthropology students who are preparing to graduate or who are anticipating to graduate in the next few years. We hope this new series, lecture series, creates more of a constructive, practical dialogue uh, between recent ECU anthropology graduates with current ECU anthropology majors. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure to introduce our final speaker and uh, an individual who uh, title, the, her title of her talk is All Over the Place, Literally and Figuratively. Uh, she graduated with her BA in 2011 a double major in theater arts and anthropology with, with a concentration in archaeology and a minor in French, and a minor in French. And when she was in my class, she was not quiet. She was very well, straightforward, spoken, shared her opinion on a lot of different issues. So it gives me great pleasure, esteemed pleasure, to introduce Emma Browning. Um, if you want to interrupt me, feel free. You don't have to raise your hand, but hey, <laughs> ask me a question. Go for it. Um, I'll give you a little more background on me. Here you said my major. Um, woo! Yeah, that was a nerd I love ECU. <laughs> um, yeah, I went after um, I graduated, I moved to England for a year and a half, got my master's in bioarchaeology, the concentration in oyster analysis. I'll get to that later. That's your story. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, and a little bit more about me. I've been acting since I was three years old. Um, I did a lot of film, did a lot of extra work. My mom was a part of a talent scout company. So I did that up until high school when I switched gears to theater. And just the public speaking, I'm just dancing around. Um, yeah, then I did theater all through college, obviously, and then I took a break. Went full on into archaeology, and then I came back here, and I have. Um, nothing but film and anthropology and a little bit of archaeology because my dad's an archaeologist so I worked for him part-time. Um, yes, uh, yeah, my dad's an archaeologist so I grew up doing that, grew up in Richmond. All these different archaeological sites so that's what I've been doing. I'm kind of all over the place, that's me. That's <laughs> literally me. Um, yeah, I worked in Richmond, North Carolina, Pompeii. Um, my latest one was Gozo in Malta so that was awesome. Um, and I did some stuff in England. Um, Major, uh, minor in French, which is awesome because it has really, really, really helped me when I went abroad and working with other cultures. Is anyone in here speaking another language? Anybody? Yes. <laughs> Anybody? Kind of. What do you speak? Spanish. Spanish sweet. Are you taking classes here? Yeah. Yeah. See? It'll help. Even basic <laughs> Spanish helps. When you go to another culture, they respect you a lot more if you can at least say, hi, how are you? <laughs> Thank you in their language. So it's good. Um, I don't forgot that. Okay, grad school. I lived in that library the entire time. Grad school is intense, especially in the UK. Um, they start at about our high school age of what they want to do, and they take classes geared exactly towards that. So when I jumped in, I, I was completely over my head. I had no idea. I didn't know anybody in the country. I didn't know anything about what I was doing, I had a little information about the program. I knew I liked it because I took, I spent a lot of, I'm going to sound really nerdy, but I spent a couple, the like 10 plus hours doing virtual tours of the city and the university, just trying to figure out if I liked it, and it sounded a lot like ECU, so I was like, I'll go for it, why not apply to grad school in England? I'll do it, and I got accepted, and yeah, then my MA started, and it was terrifying. Because I didn't, when I left ECU, I honestly had no idea what I wanted to do. Uh, I had an idea, but it wasn't really formed. 
I knew I wanted to travel. Does anybody want to travel? Yes. Do it. I'll get to that. It's a later slide. Um, I just applied to University of Leicester on whim. Got in. Went over there. Had the best year of my life. I highly recommend it. Um, is anybody thinking about grad school? Woo! Do it. <laughs> you guys know where you want to go? Can you apply? Can you apply? Um, I get married in June, so I'm okay. waiting to see about that. Awesome. I know it's going to go well. Well, I hope so. I hope she says yes. You're halfway there. That makes me first. Yeah, that's the problem. I'm in the same boat. I have no money. Um, what's it called? Um, do, 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 do. Yes, grad school. If you're on the fence about it, I highly recommend it. If you if you're, feel like you're done with school right now, take a year off, work, do it. I really recommend it. it. It was the hardest thing that I have done. I'm not gonna lie. I cried. Uh, a lot. <laughs> I got so stressed out because I, I had no idea what it was. So talk to your teachers about it so you're a little more prepared than I was. I, I did no research into what exactly a master's degree. I thought it was just a little bit slightly more intense undergrad. It's more intense than that. I went into it with a casual idea and it was slightly terrifying. But it has helped me so much. One benefit, you get paid more when you get a job. Um, people take you more seriously. Um, you further education, so you end up with a specialty as well, which will further give you a niche where you can create a job for yourself. You can't find a job, you can create one, but hey, this is my specialty, I know you need another thing, but I can do that as well, but I'm the best person in the field for this. It gives you that, and you get so much more competitive. Um, it's a great thing, and also with the networking, you get with it. Um, and it teaches you how to write. I know, is anybody going to take Dr. Matthews? I know there's another teacher for the theory class. Um, the theory class with Dr. Matthews. It's so helpful. <laughs> I took that class my senior year and she taught us how to write. It was fantastic and I cannot tell you how much that helps. Make sure, like in grad school, I submitted a paper as a test run because they do that for all of the foreign students who aren't used to an English system. So they can coach you on how to make it better or just tweak it. My paper came back looking like it was in a war zone. It was so red. It was, it was so annoying. I was like, no, I can do better than this. And I looked, I went back and I looked at all my papers from Dr. Matthews' class. And I was like, okay, I need to go do this. It's been eight months since I took this class. I really need to reevaluate it. So I did. And then I ended up getting an A on the next paper or their equivalent of an A. Because it, it, it was so much, that class, seriously, it's fantastic. Learn how to write. Use your sources, use the library. There's so many resources here. That's what I loved about this and this class, because I know when he, when I was in this class, we went to the library, learned how to use all the resources, all the citations and stuff. It's really helpful. In grad school, I had a minimum of 20 sources per paper, even if it was a five-page paper. So they wanted us to know our stuff, be to the point, boom, because I had to do a dissertation. It was Speaking of, <laughs> I just gave your class a great plug. You missed it. Um, Should have gotten here sooner. Now you'll never know what it is. Um, yes. What did I say? What did I just say? How great Dr. Matthews' class. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, my dissertation. Um, I had to, by the end of it. We get to, it was probably much the equivalent of a PhD thesis. It was less, but. It was ended up being 75 pages of just my research alone, um, and then there was a 15-page bibliography. I had 120 plus sources. So, learn how to write well. <laughs> Take your class. It's amazing. It really will help you. I cannot tell you how much that class helped me. Um, yes, and once you turn it in your dissertation, and once you're done with your MA. In the world, <laughs> you feel so smart. Um, you do, you do. Okay, so after this education, <laughs> this is going to be kind of really disjointed. I'm sorry, I was just doing, I had so much fun putting this together. Okay, um, yes, so in between um, graduating and getting my master's degree, I was putting together business cards and um, they got kind of ridiculous because when I graduated I put I had actress down, anthropologist, archaeologist. Well um, 
I got my scuba dive master, which is one step below instructor, right before I went to England. That was intense. Um, and then after England, I became an oyster analyst. It, uh, I have lots of <laughs> stories about that. Um, I had her fitness instructor, Dr. Blogger, being her designer came later. Obviously, when you apply to a job, you're not going to want to put all of this. Because if I was doing archaeology, they don't care. They don't <laughs> care that I do this. Um, that's one thing I wanted to talk about. Um, has anybody ever talked to you about writing resumes and tailoring it to whatever company you are applying to? Awesome. I don't need to go into super detail about that. Um, sweet. Do, 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 do. I do have a hypothetical scenario that I want to get you guys to do with me. Um, okay, one thing I learned in theater for helping me with um, interviewing and sending in resumes for a job is there are two different ways of doing it. There is a slightly boring way, but it's also effective. And then there's also a storytelling way. This is where theater has come into me. Um, it has actually helped me a lot. I got into a... Um, I was in an interview for an acting job, and they said I was literally the only person that day who actually said something other than, yes, I'm fine, thank you, how are you? And you walk into an interview. All right, you. All right, anyway. All right. We're walking into an interview. Hi, how are you today? I'm doing great. How about yourself? That's great. Where does the conversation go from there? Anywhere? Yeah. So, if, okay, if you walk into an interview, you say, like, hi, how are you? And you're like, Fine, thanks, but, or something along the lines of, oh my gosh, traffic was absolutely ridiculous today. I was scared I was going to be late. I'm glad I showed up early. It should, it gets you into a conversation. It doesn't exactly have to be on the subject of your interview yet. You can flow into it, but it gives you talking points. And that way they remember you more. They remember things about you. They'll get into your hobbies. Like, because um, one of the interviews was like, ah, oh, I had such a crazy weekend. I did this whole scuba diving trip. And I got chased by this fish, and it was terrifying. It's happened. <laughs> I've been chased by a barracuda. I've been bit by all these weird little fish. And, oh, I but I said that. I was walking to me. Oh, my gosh. It was ridiculous. I had a crazy week. I'm still recovering from it. And they're like, where did you go? What did you do? Wait, you were scuba diver? Yeah. Oh, I've always wanted to do that. Oh, that's so neat. And then we got to talking and talking. And then they're like, oh, yeah. We need you to the interview. You're a really fun conversationalist. Um, do things like that. Bring yourself into the interview. Don't just do, hi, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Always be polite. Say those things, but bring a little bit of yourself into it. You're more memorable that way. Um, yeah, so you, are you guys more likely to remember someone who doesn't tell a story? You'll remember that story. Because likely you're one of the only people that are doing it. I felt that interviews like that. Yay! Story! This is, yes! Thank you! You make my day more interesting. It's good, and you learn things about people, and you learn things, hey, I kind of want to try that. Why not? So, yes, people want to remember you. Um, blah, 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 blah. It also shows that you're productive with your time and that you're doing something besides twiddling your thumbs, sitting on your computer all day, applying for jobs, which is a good thing. Apply for as many jobs as you can. But it shows you have hobbies and you have a life, and you can bring something more to the company than just, I work all day. That's great, but... What's next? Ah. Okay, speaking of doing something more with your life, um, as you can see, I'm a little crazy. Um, yeah. As of September 26th, I have done a lot with my life. I, I get bored really easily. Um, I try to spice up my life as much as I possibly can. Um, but I, I felt really dirty because I was researching myself, and I had to go to Facebook, so I didn't really remember what I've done. <laughs> since I got, what do I do with my life? Um, yeah, because I was looking for jobs and I realized I, they had all the requirements on there and realized I wasn't very competitive before I graduated. I couldn't bring that much to the table. So that's one of the reasons why I applied to a school abroad because studying abroad really looks good on a resume. Um, especially for anthropology because it shows you lived in another culture, you adapted to it, you were successful in it. So hey, you can be successful in bringing job. Um, yes, so I decided to give my life a little kickstart. I moved to England. Um, as I already said, I didn't know anyone. I, know, I had no idea where I was. I got lost so many times. Um, right before I came to school dive master, um, I've traveled to 12 countries in the past two years. I graduated grad school. 
year and a half ago. Um, so I moved back to the U.S. I completed my first anthropological field school and study. Has anyone ever conducted their own study at going out interviewing anybody? Anybody? Have you? Was it terrifying walking up to people? Not really. It was in Dr. Bailey's medical anthropology class. Oh, yeah. Different uh, cultures and their medical systems, their own product practice uh, mixed in with their culture and Western medicine. That's interesting. Ah, yeah, I highly recommend it. If you can do a field school, do it. It makes it more competitive. You get um, experience, because that's the magic word for when you're applying for a job. Do you have experience? No. <laughs> I can get some if you hire me. <laughs> um, yes. Um, I went to Gozo. Where's Gozo on here? I lived in Schlendi, which is this, and I lived like right there. So, yes, um, yeah, my first anthropological field school, um, we got to research our, we got to pick our own research topics. Um, they approved it. Um, we had advisors there to help us out with it, but we were relatively on our own. Um, we had to go find our own informants, interview them, ask for permission, um, record them, and then put it all together by ourselves. Um, it's scary walking up to someone you don't know. Like in this setting, I feel comfortable walking up to you, but when someone's at work, which is usually what they were doing when I walked up to them, um, it was kind of just, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, I have some questions I'd like to ask you about your life. And they just, I had no idea. It was so trial and error. I felt really horrible. Um, because the first one that they did as, in, as um, I really recommend this course, was in Gozo. You can do it. I learned about it through ECU's Facebook page, and um, that was fantastic. Um, their first little thing that they give you, they give you an egg and a partner, and they send you to a city. But it's, but it's not very populated, it's not a very populated island, so there aren't that many people. Um, it's about 5,000 people maybe on the island. It's awesome. Um, they give you an egg, and you have to go knock on people's doors, find people on the streets, and then you have to trade the egg for something. It's an icebreaker to get you to talk to people, ask them questions, get to know them. Um, so we were literally walking up to these people, knocking on their doors. Hi, I have this egg. Please don't shut the door. <laughs> um, would you like to trade the egg for anything? And they just looked at us like, do you want me to cook it for you? What are you doing? Um, so yeah, in the end, after they kind of understood it, because some of the people, the, um, the older generation, um, did not understand English. They spoke Maltese, which is a mixture between Italian and Arabic. Therefore, I have no experience in it. I, I can kind of say hello in Spanish, but I, I can say hello in Italian, but nothing like it. Um, so it was an experience getting to meet a different culture, trying to give them an egg and get something in return. But they ended up just giving us the food in their cabinets instead of taking the egg. Be like, no, 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 I don't, I don't want an egg. I, don't, I, don't, I have chickens. I don't eat this egg. Here's a banana. Here is a car part. <laughs> so they'll give you pretty much anything. So. Yeah, um, if you can do your own mini study, I mean, talk to your peers. Just go up to random people saying, hey, I'm going to do study. Um, just get used to it, because it is scary the first time. Um, I mean, even if you're really good at talking to people, I recommend doing it. It's fun doing your own sur um, survey. I mean, not just, here's this piece of paper, please fill it out. You don't get to talk to people very much like that. It works. It just depends on what you want out of it. Um, but yeah, talk to people. It's so helpful. Um, what else did I do? Going back. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I do a lot of acting. I've done nine short films, two lead roles in a Discovery ID show. I hosted a children's educational show twice. Um, I was in a commercial at a theater show. Um, yeah, and then I did a nonprofit um, photo shoot for a cancer organization. So I'm out there doing stuff. I'm constantly, constantly, constantly researching new things that I can do. Um, workshops, they're fantastic. A lot of them are free. Um, so you can go do a skill. Um, the field school here is fantastic. I'm sure your teachers would let you volunteer, do something to help. Just something like that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, just get yourself out there. Research it. I, I have a website that I go on every single day for acting things just to find out what I can do. I'm on the Bioanthropology Facebook page. I'm on the UC Alumni Facebook page, your students Facebook page. I'm always checking that because they have really cool articles. Keep up your reading. It's fantastic. It's, they have really, really, really cool articles. Um, it keeps you up to date. Let's you know what everybody else is doing. 
And if you like the articles, you can contact people writing them. Hey, I thought this was really cool. Do you have any suggestions of field schools I could do for this, workshops, such and such and such, or a volunteer for you, maybe? Sometimes. Sometimes I don't have contact information, but your teachers are well full of information there. Um, okay, what's next? That's not it. I think? No, same thing. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all I've been doing. It's not much, right? <laughs> um, do you guys have any questions? I have a question. Sweet. I was just wondering, um, have you ever been in any films that maybe some of us have seen before? The only one I can think of, I was an extra in the HBO series Iron Jawed Angels. That's what I like. You can see me walk past it. <laughs> <laughs> but unless you live in Virginia Beach, you won't see it. That's the only big thing. It's fun. Um, that thing's on PBS. So if you watch that. <laughs> scuba diving knowledge and skills when you're doing any archaeology or well for your oyster. Yes, absolutely. Um, that's one of the reasons why I did archaeology. I mean, sorry, scuba diving. I love underwater archaeology, shipwreck archaeology. That's what I would do if I fully pursued archaeology. Um, so there's so much fun, and I get to scuba dive every day. So, hey. Um, and also, um, what's it called? And my dad. Um, there's a place called Stafford Hall up in Maryland, D.C. area. And um, they have a 17th century dock there. So um, I think this coming summer, I'm going up there to survey it for my dad because he can't scuba dive. And he's diabetic, so he can't go under. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to survey that for him. And funny enough is the wooden structures don't exist anymore. Um, they have had previous divers go there. But since um, a lot of times people shut oysters on that docks, and they all land, because there's no current or anything, right on the sides of the dock. So what I'm going to do is search for those oyster shells lining the um, dock and any other artifacts there, just to see if it's still there. So we'll see. So yeah, that's something I've done. Um, yeah, it's fun. Um, yeah, there was also a um, class down at Lake Rawlings. I know the scuba divers here who went. It was an archaeological survey class. So you can't take classes for archaeological survey just in random. Classes. They do it a lot because um, they like to teach people to respect the wrecks and things like that. Because most, a lot of them, a lot of the scuba diving things we go on are historical wrecks, especially on the coast of North Carolina. Whew! <laughs> that's, that's my favorite place to dive. Amazing, amazing, amazing shipwrecks. Um, yes, why? Just why? Um, okay. My favorite thing, the one I really want to do, is tell like you to travel especially with the anthropology. Do you, do you guys want to explore um, creating anthropology? Anybody? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, it's good. Um, I know there's a quote that it says that you don't understand your own culture until you've at least visited two others. It's so true. Um, when I was in England, people were constantly, constantly coming up to me. Are you American? Oh, that's so cool. Are you from New York? Are you from New York? No. Are you from Miami? No. <laughs> California? No. Where are you from? <laughs> Virginia? Where's that? I showed it to him on a map, right up on the computer, and he's like, oh, you're so close to New York! Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but yeah, they just, they constantly are asking questions, what do you call this, what do you call this, what do you call this, because they call a faucet a tap. I was like, ah, a faucet. <laughs> what did you just say? So, yeah. Um, there's a really bad one. Um, they call pants. Pants is underwear. So one day I would say, oh, I gotta go back and change my pants. And I was like, Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> so that was a cultural experience. <laughs> so you'll, you'll pick up one of the things like that that you um, wouldn't necessarily even think about in your own culture. Um, there's a lot of things that I got asked, and it was just crazy. Um, Someone once asked me if there was brass in America. Like, the, the, just like the plant. Nope. Nope. <laughs> None. <laughs> None at all. Um, but yeah, travel, 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 travel. It's, it's the best experience ever. Um, save up for it. It really is worth it. Um, I got a travel credit card super 
super low credit limit because I'm lacking money. But <laughs> it gives you miles, and that way you can just pay yourself back for it, and it gives you a cheaper way to travel. Um, I'm always looking for cheaper ways to travel. I'm cheap. I don't want to pay full price to travel. Um, but it really, really, really does give you a good experience. Um, go to anthropological field schools. They are so worth it, plus it gives you a chance to travel. So, it's good. I went to the one in Gozo. I know there's several ECU sponsors. I've heard good things about them. I didn't go to one when I was in college, and I really regret it. Because when you get out of school, you're doing, is anybody doing archaeology? Nope. Well, I'll use this example anyway. Because um, if you get out of school and um, you don't know how to use a trowel, you don't know how to dig, you don't know how to build, or set it off in grid lines, what are you going to do? How are you going to get a job? Ugh, I, you don't know. Um, you can always get an internship. Internships are great. Um, None of you are interested in archaeology, so I can't recommend my dad to you. He could have got you a job. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I know, I mean, your friends are bound to have people in the anthropological field that you think, hey, can I volunteer for your friend? Do they have any suggestions of what I could do? How do I make myself more competitive? Um, what do I need to do to be considered for this such and such job? It's, it's good. Use the people that you know. Networking. Um, I wish I talked to my professors more. I did more so in anthropology than I did theater, because they were a lot nicer. I love the theater people, but it was, I don't know, it was super scary talking to them. They were very intimidating. Um, yeah, use your teachers. They know a lot more people than you do. They know what you want to do. They've been there. They've done that. They have awesome jobs. They know how to help you get jobs. If you're in this class, you guys are on the right track. It's good. That's why I took this class. I have no idea what to do. Please help. So, here we're talking about stepping out of your own culture. Um, Reevaluate re what you want. Um, what did I say? Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. Um, if you don't really, does anybody, is there on the fence? that they don't know really what they want to do exactly. They're just kind of figuring it out. I was there. Oof. I was there so often. Um, yeah, just taking a lot of people when they graduate, they think, I have to get a job right now, exactly the field that I want, doing exactly what I want to do. So chances are you're not going to start out doing exactly what you want to do. But um, you can always take a year off, do all the stuff I said, well, internships, field school, blah, 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 making yourself more competitive. But just take a year off. If you need it, some people don't. Some people like it. Um, just to clear your head, figure out exactly what you want to do. That's partly why I went to England. Um, it really helped. I finally, what I want to do. Took me a while. Graduated three years ago. On track now, so it's good. But yeah, um, just do what you need to do. Um, going right, jumping right into an MA might not be your thing. It might be perfect for you. Um, taking a year off. Hey, it could happen save up for grad school or save up for whatever you want to do. Um, just know, just don't make, I know a lot of people, I started out because my dad really, 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 really wanted me to do archaeology. It's a full, full-time thing. I love archaeology. It's fantastic. My passion is much more in anthropology. I like talking to people more um, instead of digging them up. But, <laughs> so, I have a lot of cheesy jokes, guys. It's bad. Um, Feel free to laugh at me. Um, so yeah, I've I finally just like, Dad, I'm sorry, but <laughs> work for you part time, but I gotta do this. So I know a lot of people feel the pressure from their parents. And be like, you need a job. You graduated. You need to move out. Get your own job. Start your own salary. Blah 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 blah. Just parents, it's okay. I will get there. Hey, if you're already going on to your MA right after this, props to you guys. It's good. You have a job lined up. I know a lot of you are juniors. You have a whole other year to worry about. A whole other year of school. You're fine. Um, <laughs> just things to think about. Um, yeah, study abroad. You learn about these different cultures. Difference in how school works. I already talked about it. Um, learning benefits is you do study abroad, you learn a different system of education. England was super different. Um, just, yeah. Um, it, did you have to write? <laughs> Take her. Is anybody signed? You guys signed up for it right now. So helpful. It's good. It's good, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I would have passed my master's without that class. Um, and I thought you were like, fantastic. Go on a resume. Because people ask you about it. And then it's that conversation. Point, like, yes. I lived in another country for a little bit. So, yes. We do, 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 do. Um, where did I go from here? Yeah. Okay. What do you want? 
here I'm going to do, um, these aren't just pictures of random men. Um, <laughs> <laughs> got to the internet and a picture. Um, uh, this is Lloyd, Dino, and Werner. They were my first informants in Gozo. I was there last June and July, and um, they are super helpful. I was studying, um, they are all, uh, he was British, Spanish, but lives in England, and he is German, and, uh, no, Swiss. Yes, he's Swiss. Um, but they were all foreigners living in Gozo, working, and I was studying um, how the Maltese culture uh, took to them, how they fit into the culture and adapted to it. It's really interesting. Um, I, they always make fun of me because um, they're like, all right, come back, come on after this time, we'll be back from diving. They're all scuba divers. Um, come back from diving, we'll sit down and have a beer. You can ask us questions. So that we all sit down at the table and they're like, what do you want to know about me? <laughs> it's just like, well, this is easy. You guys are great. Because um, the first time I went up to them, I knew they were big drinkers because people told me, I was like, okay, this is going to sound really weird, but I am doing an anthropological field school. I know you've seen us around. There have been field schools years before us. I wanted to do something with the scuba diving community because I was done it before successfully. And... Um, I don't know what the people did before me, but apparently they were rude to the scuba drivers, and so they kind of shut down. And so I went in there, I was like, "Okay, I want to ask you guys a couple questions. I know that's weird to be asked quite normal questions about yourself. Like, don't you grow up? Blah, 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 blah. I want to write a paper about that. Like, I'm not special. Why do you want to do that about me? I was like, I will buy you all beer. Please let me interview. Yay! <laughs> Come back anytime. So yeah. So they let me, I talked to them pretty much every day for three weeks, and they were a fantastic time. They are a rowdy bunch. Mm -hmm. But it's, I got so much great information. Um, I still email them, they're still talking to me, they're sending me information about other divers and that have come in there that are from foreign countries that are now living in Malta. So the networking thing, even if the random people that you meet, keep in touch with them, grab their email, you never know what random little information they'll email you. I get random emails from them. Hey, by the way, I'm in England now. What do you want to know? <laughs> so it's it's fantastic. Um, I've kind of talked about almost everything. Yeah, figure out what you like doing. Don't ever do a job you don't like. Obviously, you're gonna have to start at the bottom of a job. And you're not gonna like it very much, but it gets you to where you want to be. If you want to be an anthropologist, don't start out as a janitor. Like I want to work as a janitor. No, almost. Go do whatever you gotta do to do it. Um. Make sure that you are as competitive as you possibly can be. Um, and hobbies, the little hobbies is not to get it. I did scuba diving because of archaeology and because I've always wanted to do it. So if you can kind of finagle your way into doing something you've always wanted to do because it helps your career, it's even better. Um, yes. Do 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 has anybody thought about applying to jobs? I know a lot of you are juniors. Have you applied to jobs yet? Not quite yet. Do you know what resources you want to use to find jobs? Have you used the ECU resources? Use those. Um, USAjobs.gov. Yeah. Different uh, professors asking around. Are you going on LinkedIn? monster and things like that. Cool, yeah. Write yourself like that. Um, you can always put make your own website for yourself. Make it searchable through Google. Employers are always searching. One of my friends works for the U.S. government and the Department of Defense, and she uses me to look at people's LinkedIn files so they can't see that her company is looking at them. She's like, hey, I wanted to, I'm Googling this person. I need to look into them. Can you do this for me? Sure. Why not? So, employers are, I know that sounds kind of creepy, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I phrase that really bad. <laughs> yeah, because they, they, but their their jobs. The point is, in a non creepy way, the jobs are out there. They're looking for people. They have, they have headhunters, recruiters everywhere. They want you to. They want they want to hire you. So it's what you do. It's hireable. My little nugget of wisdom with that. Um. Yeah, that's kind of it. Um. How's that? Yeah, this is basically doing it. Um, just my suggestions. Um, even if you think you don't fully um, 
are what's called qualifying for a job, apply for it. Some jobs will send you to schools so they make you. If they like you enough, they'll find a way to hire you. You just have to make yourself out there. Um, take chances. I took a chance on moving to England. That was the most terrifying thing I've ever done, honestly. Moving to another country. I didn't know anybody. I've never been to the city. Never been to the school. <laughs> so <laughs> it's good. It worked out really well for me. Um, obviously, it's not going to work out every single time, but it's good. You get to see places like that. Um, my biggest thing, I guess, is make yourself absolutely competitive as possible. If it doesn't work out, that out. Um, um, figure out why it doesn't work. I know a lot of the times when it didn't work out for me, I was like, what happened? Why don't they like me? Don't think that. Um, there's a reason why they didn't hire you or pick someone else. It might be just because you had the exact same resume as this person, the exact same qualifications, but they had this one other hobby, or they went to one little workshop. It's things like that, or they just had a better experience in the interview with them. It's there's so many different reasons that go into hiring somebody. Um, but seriously, make assess just assess what happened. Um, go back, look at your resume. Is there something? Is there a hole in your resume? Do you think that you could have done fill in this area more so you have more experience here? Um, if they call you and say, hey, thank you so much for applying, but we decided to go with someone else. We just wanted to let you know. Sometimes we'll do that. Talk to them. Like, all right. Why did you go with the other person? Um, what can I do better? Um, do you have openings in the future? Am I still being considered? Do I resume there? Do I need to, what do I need to do? It shows you're working. You want that job. You're working for it. Show them you're hungry. Um, get your skills, like I said. Fill in that resume where you have gaps. Just do what you're doing. Keep getting experience. Um, you can take time off, reassess, and then do all that stuff again. Go for it. That's all you really can do. Just go for it. It's working out for me. Questions? Let's have a round of applause. <laughs> Sorry, I was a little disjointed. Questions? Emma, how is school different in England than in the U.S.? <sighs> yes. Um, in case anyone's thinking about it. The easiest way I've had it described to me is here we are so broad and shallow when we go to undergrad and in high school and things like that because we have all of the gen ed courses. I love that. I find it amazing because I got to do all these different things. But over there, um, it's super narrow and deep. Where you start out, you are going to school for just what you want to go to school for, and it's only you don't have the gen ed classes. You, when I was taking archaeology, um, my field was bioarchaeology, and I my classes were theory for archaeology. It was zoo archaeology, and I had a um, I had sort of, it was geared toward what I wanted to do, but I didn't have a research project, so I got stuck with analyzing 15,032 oysters. So, it's it's literally, it's just geared towards your, your major, that's it. Um, there's also a lot more writing. Um, don't let that deter you if you want to go to England. But um, I, I never took a quiz or a test, ever. We didn't even have final exams, which I thought was, that blew my mind, I had no idea. Um, but we had about, I wrote about 20 papers, but my course was only um, 12 months instead of two years. That's another difference. It was a lot shorter, at least for what I wanted to do. Um, yeah, and in the end, we wrote a dissertation. Um, I know the master's here writes a thesis. <coughs> How long is a thesis in the U.S.? Ish. So, like, yeah, it was about the same. Yeah, I wrote a, um, they call it a dissertation. Um, it was 75 pages with 15 pages of bibliography. It was great, though, um, because I ended up writing about oysters, because that was my, I gained a specialty in oyster analysis from that. I got to examine um, 48 boxes of nothing but Roman to um, the medieval era oyster shells. Which was neat at first. I really enjoyed it once it was over. But my teacher, <laughs> <laughs> um, my teacher said, "Okay, here, here's um, here's twelve boxes. Um, we want to do this. This will be a good enough sample study for your paper. Great, that's great." And then he comes back. I have a couple more boxes. Would you be willing to analyze them for us? Because this was his PhD project where he excavated a castle. Okay, cool. I'll do that. How many boxes are there? Thirty-six. Oh. 
And these are not small boxes. It's probably about the size of the bottom square. Full oh, wow. Yeah. 15,032 just oysters. We also did uh, mussels, cockles, limpets, and clams. So I probably, yeah, it was a lot. But I gained a specialty, so. Um, how did you make yourself competitive when you were applying to graduate school? See, that's the hard part because I, when I graduated, I mean, I had the double major. Um, it's a little late for a double major for juniors, but um, I had that and I had the experience with theater and public speaking. Um, I took a couple workshops. I took public speaking even though I had the theater. Um, I worked for my dad that summer just to get more archaeological work. Um, I did the scuba diving dive master just so I could be slightly above the other divers. And studied a lot. I read a lot of papers so that I was, and I brushed up on the writing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I read a lot of anthropological papers and just so I was still up to date because I graduated in May, but I didn't move until September. So it was kind of a big gap from where I wasn't learning. Um, you made the comment earlier about um, high school in England, how they start to, to specialize in what they want to do with the rest of their life. Okay. Um, I teach health and PE middle school here, uh, and one's for sure. But um, <clears throat> in your opinion, I, I know that in, in, in your class you said that you didn't have tests and everything like that. Well, everything that we've learned throughout college is that grades don't matter. You know, we teach to the test um, with Common Core and electives and stuff like that. Just just how we teach here compared to other cultures is somewhat ineffective. In your opinion, um, you know, finding that that niche in high school and, and running with it, do you feel like that um, is a better way to educate? Or? In some ways, because it didn't work for some people because they they wanted to do other things as well, mm -hmm. but they had less of an opportunity to be able to branch out. Um, whereas here, you can take whatever electives you want mm -hmm. as long as it you have the hours for it. Um, but I think it does help. A lot, but for those of the people who don't know what they want to do, they get thrown into something, and then if they change it, they're kind of stuck, and they have to go back. But um, so it's a little bit harder to transition. But if you know what you want to, do, if you're one of those people who knows exactly what you want to do, it's great. If you're thrown into it, you're doing that all the time. You don't have other things to distract you. But if you don't know what you're going to do, I would have been horrified. <laughs> but um, I think also. Um, they're used to that system too, and here we have shorter attention spans, some people shorter attention spans, so it's harder, to, it would be harder to incorporate that, but Yes? Yes, uh, Emma, uh, outstanding presentation, um, by the way. I was just kind of curious, you uh, you traveled overseas, how did your family initially react to you going over England, and I don't know if they were aware of your interests of you know, really traveling abroad, and then where do you see your career uh, at this point in time in the next five years? Whew, okay. Now that you know, we know a lot more about you, particularly being an actress and <laughs> being a double major in theater and everything. Um, okay, this is a long answer. Um, my parents, they both went to school in England. They, they have a love affair with England. Um, they both got their master's degree over there. So they were like, get out, go to England. We have an excuse <laughs> to go visit you. But as I was over there, like, Please come home. I don't like this. So they were happy for me, but um, they also, why are you traveling all these countries? You need to be studying. But they don't. They didn't realize that when you travel over there, you're usually on a train. You're not driving. No, almost no one drives really when you're our age. Um, so I was on a train. I brought my work with me, and then I rewarded myself by finishing something. And then I got to go and travel and study and do this. Every time I traveled to a different country or a different city in England, um, I brought my work with me because there was so much of it. But yeah, I got to do that. Um, where I see myself going, I really, really, really want to do both acting and anthropology. I love anthropology, especially after taking that field school. I had no idea I loved it that much. I knew I loved it when I graduated here, but I'd never done it before, just gone out on my own. And Back to the survey, but I adored it. I'm in the process of still writing up the paper. It's taken a long time, but um, the the good thing about that is I am automatically published once they once I revise it a couple times, so I get published after that. 
So I would love to go on and write more anthropological papers and do more anthropological studies in community culture, um, specifically Europe, because I love it. Um, with acting, I would love to post more and just do film, film, not theater. You have a wonderful personality. You have to start your own TV show. Thank you. I wish. I would love to. Thank you. Oh, I want to happen. It's going to happen. Like you said, just go for it. I will. I am. You know I am. <laughs> um, this, I was going to ask, kind of like, well, have you ever thought of like incorporating that, the acting in film, like maybe like, not even like necessarily doing an acting, but like a documentary, or maybe from do it from the perspective of directing? I would. Love to do that. I would love to make short films, documentaries, anything about combine the two, like mm -hmm. or do a um, kind of like an anthropological show, like travel, uh, yeah. cultural things. Because I know a lot of the cult um, travel shows are, yay, we're going to the tourist cities. Um, this is what you can do as a tourist, but it doesn't really show you what you can do at like what the locals do. They do a little bit, but it's it's the locals who are giving them money to come, so they can advertise it to become a bigger tourist thing. But I like to go off the beat and track and just be like, what do the locals do? What is the cool thing to do? I don't want to go where there's going to be a million tourists. It's, it's not fun. It's crowded. So I would love to do something like that. Anybody? Any other questions? If not, let's have another round of applause for Emma. <laughs> At this time, <laughs> at this time, I want to present Emma our ECU Aww. Anthropology Alumni Lecturers Award. This is to acknowledge your professional achievements and to give appreciation for graduating from our East Carolina University Department of Anthropology. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and and we also have. Oh, by the way. Uh, Emma, uh, again, was an outstanding student in this class. One thing I knew about her, she had so much energy. I mean, she was just yeah. bubbling with energy. And when she gave her final presentation, I said, she is going, just, it just blew me away. I mean, your energy is infectious. And I just guarantee you that you, you changed a lot of individuals' perspective in that class. And I just said, this, this is a person I know is going to be phenomenal in her career, okay? So, <laughs> so again, that's genuine. I, I really um, picked that up from day one, okay? So I, I wish you all the best. And now, with Emma being here, I told her, I said, we take pictures, and we want to do a, uh, a group, group selfie, selfie, if you don't mind. Yeah, let's do it.